Well, the Angel coaching staff is finally set, and we're going to introduce you to some of the names. We're excited about the hitting coach. We're excited about the pitching coach. We're excited about these coaches. Maybe they can have a, gr- a great impact on the Angels. It's time to get locked on with Mike and John, and this is Locked On Angels. You are Locked On Angels, your daily Los Angeles Angels podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. You can find us anywhere you get your podcasts, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and SiriusXM by searching Locked On Angels. And if you'd like to give back to the Super Halo Bros for all the Angel content, here's some things that you can do. You can leave us a rate and a review on Apple Podcasts. If you're watching on YouTube, you can hit that thumbs up button. And if you're not subscribed already, hit that subscription button and become a Locked On Everydayer. And whether you're watching or listening, come over to YouTube, leave a comment. It's one of the best ways to get in touch with us and be a part of the conversation. And today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. You can make every moment more with FanDuel. And right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on today to get started. Thanks for being here for this episode of Lockdown Angels, where it's your team every day. You've got the Frisch Brothers here with you, a.k.a. the Super Halo Bros. My name is John, and that's my brother Mike. And my name is Mike, and that's my brother John. Mike, the offseason is starting to heat up a little bit. We saw some free agents come off the board, and a lot of starting pitching come off the board. And for Halo fans, we're ready for them to make some signings. But it is good that it does seem that we've rounded out the coaching staff for 2024, all helmed by Ron Washington, and so it seems like they've got their hitting coach set in stone, their catching coach, pitching coach. They've even added a, an offensive coordinator, Mike. I guess the Angels are going to go back to the days where the Rams played at Angel Stadium <laughs> and hop on over to the NFL, right? But I think that's actually a very good thing, and we'll talk about it here in just a minute. But let's get started with the hitting coach, Johnny Washington. Yeah, he's a 39-year-old man, a a former coach of the Cubs. He was an assistant hitting coach with the Cubs the last two seasons. He was in South Korea for a time with the KBO. And he was also with the Dodgers and the Padres, Johnny. And he comes with a lot of affirmation. A lot of people really, really appreciate him, really enjoy him. Uh, Somebody like Johnny is... Somebody has a lot of really great credibility because he was a former player, so he mm-hmm. can bring a lot of good wisdom. In fact, he just missed playing for Ron Washington when he was a player in 2007 when Washington became the Rangers head coach, their manager. Uh, Johnny was in the minors and then was released, so they just missed each other. Interesting thing about Johnny Washington is that he was considered and interviewed for the Angels managerial position before they hired Joe Madden. So he's Mm -hmm. somebody that the Angels are well aware of. And he comes again with a lot of credibility. Players really like him. Uh, Two specific players, Johnny, that were former Dodgers and then were part of the Cubs organization had some really great things to say. Why don't you share that? Yeah, Edwin Rios and Cody Bellinger, who were both with the Cubs this last season, where Johnny Washington was, they actually worked with him in the Dodgers minor league system. And so they had some some great things to say as we were researching. Who is Johnny Washington? Is he going to be somebody who can help out this team? And so Edwin Rios said Washington was able to point out a couple of things and say, this is what you used to do, and this is what you're doing now. I think that's very key, Mike, in terms of letting somebody know, hey, you you got away from what was working for you in the past. He, He continued to say he would take those thoughts and put them into my swing now. It's been great and been working out for me. Uh, Just by the way, side note, Johnny Washington, Ron Washington, George Washington, no relation. Not related. uh, (laughs) (laughs) No nepotism going on here. And then Cody Bellinger had some great things to say as well. And you can imagine that seeing the resurgence that Cody Bellinger had, obviously working with the Cubs uh, main hitting coach, but also working with assistant hitting coach Johnny Washington can't be a bad thing. And so I think it's uh, really important that Johnny Washington is part of this team. And all indications seem to say that uh, from – people who talk baseball all around the MLB is that this is a great move yeah. by the halos. And hasn't it felt that way for with all of these additions? It seems like yeah. everybody's kind of saying, Hey, that's a, that's a pretty good move by the there halos. Was a, there was a lot on <laughs> every day or that commented uh, when you tweeted that Johnny was hired and they said something that caught my attention. They said often 
when we sign great players, we have young guys that come up. There was a hesitation because, oh, wait till Matt Wise gets a hold of them, or yeah. <laughs> wait till Mike Marcus Timms, or or I can't even remember the the hitting coach before Marcus Timms because I've tried to forget that part of my life. But right. uh, the the truth is is that we weren't really confident in these in these coaches, right, and their ability yeah. to help these players to improve. I know the Angels haven't made any moves in the hot stove as of this recording. But truthfully, John, I'm excited about these moves, specifically with with uh, Johnny Washington, because it feels like these guys come in, and dare I say, know what they're doing. Like we're not having, yeah. we're not, we're not going to have an episode where you're going, "What do you do? Yeah. What do you do?" Well, right? we'll see. But you know, yeah, <laughs> I know, yeah. I, I get it. We'll see. But I feel like we're not going to have those those moments simply because these guys have. A, a long history. They have experience. Mm -hmm. They have great credibility. And I particularly enjoyed the fact that Cody Bellinger was somebody that really appreciated Washington's impact on what he was able to do with the Cubs this last season. Cause that guy was fantastic. And then he fell off a cliff yeah. and then to be able to come back and get a swing back, that's huge. And you know that that's mental. And that's yeah. the part that I really appreciate because with these angels players more on the pitching, maybe than on the hitting, a lot of this is just getting over that mental hurdle and being able to get past the the nerves and the and the yips to be able to go out there and be the player that they are. Somebody mentioned, you know, hey, uh, an aging trout, a declining Rendon, a uh, 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 losing a Shohei, this team's going to be in a lot of trouble next season. And that's yes, that's why you raise the floor the, yeah. and hiring a coaching staff who knows what they're doing and is able to get the best out of the players you already have. That raises the floor. Yeah. And what I mean by that is at the bare minimum, it's going to be better than what they were last season because these are talented guys and we've seen a track record of talent and skill and the ability to put it all together. But talent only, only takes you so far, Mike. We've said this a million times because we saw what happens when you don't have great coaching around you. We saw what happens when you don't adjust your game plan with runners in scoring position. You you fall flat on your face and you don't drive in those two runners on second and third. It drives you nuts as a fan. I'm sure it drives you nuts as a player too. So I think raising the floor and getting the most and, and squeezing the sponge of talent that these guys have, it starts with the coaching staff. And the, so that's why it's so important for these guys to come in and raise the floor of this team. Speaking yeah. of making adjustments, yeah. uh, they hired Tim Laker as an offensive coordinator. Yeah. He was the minor league hitting coordinator for the Dodgers and was the Mariners hitting coach from 2019 to 2021. Mike, what do you imagine an offensive coordinator in major league baseball? What does that look like? Maybe it's the West coast offense, John, or uh, do you think it's the spread offense? Uh, what oh wait, <laughs> is that college football? <laughs> that's, that's back in the day with, uh, with, you know, Bill Walsh and all of those guys from the Niners. I, I think that when it comes to somebody like an offensive coordinator, one, it can't hurt, right? Because no, this, no, team... this is a new position that they never had before. And so it's like, yes. okay, they're spreading, they're spreading the job around. Yes. yes it can't I, hurt. I, I feel like like this, this guy's job, think, think of it as uh, here's, here's the politician. And then mm -hmm. here's the, here's the person in, like chief of staff. Right. Mm -hmm. And so Johnny Washington's kind of like the politician. And then Tim Laker is going to be the chief of staff. They're both going to have a significant role but I feel like Tim Laker can get into the details a bit. I feel like mm -hmm. he can get into the specifics. And one of the things that I hope that he's able to do is make in-game adjustments that perhaps yes. somebody like Johnny Washington isn't thinking about because he doesn't have to think about that. And he could say to the team, listen, we're not moving runners over. And so we right. need to focus on that. Listen, we're not, we're not bunting like we should, or we need to get a fly ball to get a sack fly here. I, mm -hmm. I think that he could be somebody that, from the analytical department, he could communicate some of those things, but also from a coaching department, he could say, you know, you're, you're dipping your shoulder a bit here. And it would just be, it's, it's kind of a two headed dragon that can come after this offense, because even though the numbers look good. And remember, we've talked about this. Somebody 10 years from now are going to look at the angels offensive numbers and go, Hey, they look great. Right. But they it's going to be, it's yeah. going to be really, really far away. But you and I and everydayers who watched this team last season will go, yeah, the runners in scoring position were terrible. They weren't moving runners over. Situational hitting was awful. I feel like Tim Laker can have a good game plan to pass to Johnny Washington and to the players to help them not get stuck in a rut and stuck with, let's just get a home run. Let's get a three-run home run. Let's just attack the zone and not yeah. really think thoughtfully about, hey, there's a runner at second. What do we want to do with him? Yeah, I would like to see if, uh, a plan between 
the hitting coach and the offensive coordinator in terms of how to attack the starting pitcher that day. And if the starting pitcher adjusts his game plan, then the angels adjust. One thing that Ron Washington said on the athletic baseball show was that something you and I have talked about on this show, Mike, is this game is a game of adjustments. Yeah. You adjust the league adjusts to you and then you readjust and back and forth it goes. And that's exactly the kind of mentality that these halos need. And that's why I'm excited to see Ron Washington lead this staff, Johnny Washington as a hitting coach, and then Tim Laker as the offensive coordinator, you have to make in-game adjustments. That's what this game is about. And on a broader scale, if you find out you can strike out Trout up and in, then Trout's got to adjust to that, right? Yeah. And, and so the adjustment goes back and forth. And Marcus Timms, to his credit, the attack the zone approach, attacking early, did work. And we've shown that yes. through stats and, and all the uh, results that was there. But the problem is, is that the game plan did not change. It was the same uh, all the way through. Yes. It was the same all the way through from inning one to inning nine. And you just can't do that. You have to be able to make adjustments. Johnny, I would say that Marcus Timms was the best of the worst coaches, right? Like, sure. like, 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 he well, wasn't he had a, a game bad, plan. Yes, he wasn't a bad hitting coach comparative to what we've had before. Jeremy I, Reed, that's what you were looking for. That's right? who it was. Well, I told you, I'm trying to forget that part of my life. <laughs> I, but I, I am really excited and, and I'm really excited that that Johnny has an opportunity to really establish himself as a great uh, hitting coach for this team. I'm also excited, John, because it's not just the hitting coach, but then also somebody in the pitching coach world that has an opportunity to really establish themselves. So I, I really like these moves and that they're going to be serving under a great leader, a great general like Ron Washington. Thanks for making Lockdown Angels your first listen every single day. We're just getting started. So coming up on Lockdown Angels... The Angels hired a pitching coach, finally, probably has the hardest job in all of baseball, Mike, in terms of <laughs> yes. getting the best out of these guys. So we're going to talk about who that is and what they need to do coming right up. Today's show is brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. FanDuel is America's number one sports book. And right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 bucks if your team wins. And if you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, and we know some everydayers have. In fact, somebody commented just the other day and said, all right, all right, all right. I'm going to try out FanDuel. So if, if that's you as an everydayer, we'd love to hear if you were successful. If you won, if you got $150, bucks, could John and I have like, 10 like that would be really great if you could share that with us <laughs> but you're gonna get 150 bucks if your team wins with just a five dollar money line bet this app is so easy to use especially if you're new to uh, winning money and being able to see how to, how to gamble how to look at spreads and all of that stuff there's a wide range of betting options like the spreads player props over unders and more so Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and you can get involved in the NFL season in a very specific way. $5 money line bet win 150 bucks. Going to be a good Thanksgiving for you if you can do that. FanDuel is the official betting partner of the NFL. This is Locked On Angels, where it's your team every day, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hey, friends, you know that Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. So that is where you can find all the biggest stories in sports on Locked On Sports today, 24-7, 365 top stories in sports, local experts from all of the Locked On shows like Mike and I will be there for you, and... Of course, Locked On has their national shows from Locked On MLB, Locked On NFL, Locked On NBA. It's all there 24-7. So go to Locked On Sports today on YouTube, hit that subscribe button, and be part of the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. The Angels coaches uh, are coming together. They're starting to let us know who it is that's going to be helping our team hopefully be better in 2024. We're going to talk about the new pitching coach coming up. But Johnny, let's talk about the new catching coach, yeah. Jerry Naren. Now he's on the older side. He'll be 68 in January, but he brings almost 50 years of experience as a player, a coach, and a manager, and he's played uh, several other roles with major league clubs and minor league clubs, but he's best known for two stints as a manager. He was with the Rangers from 01 to 02 and with the Reds from 05 to 07. Uh, Johnny did play for the California Angels. Let's go. 1983 to 1986. I was three years old when he started and you weren't <laughs> even born yet. Uh, uh, he's back now with the organization. He was with them last year as a minor league catching coordinator. Johnny, I really feel like 
not just the Johnny Washington hiring and the eventual pitching coach that we'll talk about, but I really feel like this is a great hire as well. And it seems that the narrative around baseball is that, man, the Angels are really finding some some hidden treasures in these coaches that they're bringing to this organization. Yeah, it's one of the, I think it's one of the best staffs that the Angels have had in terms of coaching staff. And Mike, they're not even done. They need a bench coach. And yeah. word out there is that Clint Hurdle, former Pirates manager, Which I love that move. Yeah. Uh, would be a, a great move if he accepts the role. And I'm sure who wouldn't want to be Ron Washington's bench coach. And what surprises me about that is he's, he's pretty open to and very good at handling the data that they receive from like the yeah. analytics department and passing that along to the players in a way that makes sense in a way that's valuable to them. So that is a, a missing point right now, but you're right. I think I look at this staff, this coaching staff, and it, it, it gets all kinds of compliments from around MLB. Yeah. It also gives me a lot of reassurance that Ron Washington has a game plan and he knows what mm. he wants and he knows which guys are going to get the most out of these players. And, and that's, I'll go back to it because we talked about it last segment. Raising the floor is getting the best out of the players you have now. That doesn't mean you don't go and get free agents. It doesn't mean that you go and prove in the areas that you can improve in. But Perry Manassian can be confident that the coaching staff who's been hired here is going to get 100% out of each of the guys that are already on this team. And I understand People will look at last year and well, Sandoval sucks and Luis Renjifo is only sure. a hot hitter when it sure. doesn't matter. Like that's your opinion and that's fine. But these guys have proven that they have talent. They've shown talent in the past. They've demonstrated that. And so you just need somebody as a coach who's going to unlock that talent and keep it consistent. Ron Washington mentioned uh, on that athletic baseball show that the angels really fell off and they weren't able to sustain the offensive uh, output that they were doing through the first half of the season, they totally yeah. fell off in August. And that's why we were all so shocked that they fell off so hard. And I believe Ron Washington is doing his best to bring in a coach and or bring in a coaching staff. That's going to help keep these guys sustainable all throughout the season and get the best that they can out of them. Right. Yeah. When you talk about raising the floor, I think about Jerry Naren bringing managerial experience. So not only is he able to work one-on-one -on -one with players, but he understands how teams operate. He may have not been successful as a manager, but he understands the ins and outs. And I think somebody like Ron Washington will really benefit with having Naren on his staff. I also think, John, because he's going to be the catching coordinator, I could see somebody like Matt Theis benefiting, but specifically... Logan Ohapi and you and I've yeah. had a conversation about Ohapi's offense and he was fantastic. There's, there's a, again, a locked on every day or I, I can't think of the name, but almost on every show just reminds us if Ohapi had normal at bats, right. He would have ended up with like 54 home runs. And I love yeah. that. I love that that's thrown out there every time because he had an incredible offensive season, even though he was hurt for most of the year. And that August was really spectacular, but it's the defense, John, that, really needed to improve. And you yes. shared some really good stats, compared him to Adley Rutschman. And of, of kind of the young catchers, Ohapi finished third in the top three with defensive marks that weren't great. And to Logan's credit, he knows that he needs to get better. So how much do you think that th this move, having Jerry Naren on the team, will benefit Logan Ohapi? And then another question for you, do you think, w would it be wise to sacrifice some offensive production from Ohapi in order for him to be better defensively. Would you be willing to give that? I guess I'd be willing to do that, but I don't think that that's the way it needs to go down because hmm. it's two separate roles here. You've got the hitting coach, the offensive coordinator, and then you've got Jerry Naren as the catching coach who specifically, you know, how to handle a game with the pitching staff. I think it more than just working with Logan Ohapi, this is going to be good for the entire pitching staff, yeah, Mike, because yeah. he's going to make the catchers better behind the dish. And that's going to help the entire pitching staff at this point. And again, these pitching staff the, or the pitching staff has some good guys in there who really need to learn to be able to take it to the next level. Yeah. And, and, and their talent can only take them so far. It's, it's up to these coaches to get the best out of them. And it begins with the, the guy behind the behind the dish, whether it's Stassi sure. or Logan O'Hoppy or sure. what have you, it's how to call a game, how to make sure those guys are comfortable, how to choose which pitch they should be throwing rather than the one they want to be throwing. And it's all about communication. I think Stassi has a lot of that in him already. Mm -hmm. 
and he's been around the game long enough. And I think Logan Ohapi has the ability to improve there as well, just to make his pitchers comfortable on the mound and, and get them excited to throw to him. And, and then the defensive game uh, in terms of, you know, throwing guys out and, and being able to have a, a good pop time, right? Cause I think he had one of the lower end yeah. pop times among the catchers that we compared him to. But again, I, I believe that, look, we, we had an entirely different coaching staff last year and it can't be a bad thing to have a brand new one this year because yeah. we know what happened in the past wasn't working. And, and so this is how you, you build on that. This is how you improve upon that is just bring in a whole bunch of different new voices and minds who have experience, who understand what Ron Washington wants to do and what Ron Washington wants to accomplish with this team. I, I don't think you can go wrong getting away from everybody who was there last year. Right? Sure. I, I agree with you. Uh, and your point was, was, was good because I think that there's always the question of like, you're bringing in new guys and they have a different strategy, a different philosophy. Does that mess up some of these young guys? Does it mess up what they've already learned? And, and we've, we've already seen that when they went from, um, I think it was Doug White. And then they went to Mickey Calloway, even though he wasn't around for very long, they had to, they had to pivot because Doug White had an approach and then Calloway had an approach and Calloway had more credentials, credibility than, than Doug White did. I think in this same context, there's, there's questions about like, okay, it's a new coaching staff. What does that mean? But you've, you've already hammered the point and it's, and it's why I gave you an A on your GM episode. There's a, <laughs> there's a plan. There is a plan. Yeah. There is some sort of, they've laid it out. It's not just like, Hey, we're going to try this. It's a strategy. And they, they know what they're trying to accomplish, what they're trying to achieve. And that's when things get better because it's not just, I'm coming in to try to change this, but I'm coming in understanding culture and adjusting culture, understanding the dynamics of the organization and adjusting that so that we all can move in the same direction. And that's why I get hyped about these guys and get pumped about the fact that they they've got experience and they're going to come in and I think have a really good impact on these players. And it's a whole different world than saying, Oh, well, we've got Jeremy Reed over here and Matt wise over there, but let's replace Jeremy Reed, Marcus Tims. And yeah. And, oh, you know, yeah. Matt wise, he replaced Mickey Calloway and, and Ray Montgomery is the bench coach for Madden, but he can also be Nevin's bench. Co- like it's, it's the cohesion. Yep. Actually has a chance to be there this season because Ron Washington is at the helm and he has the ability to tell these guys, this is the game plan. This is what we're doing. And I'm hiring you because I want you to be on board with it. Johnny, we have a hitting coach and we have a catching coach and now we have a pitching coach. And that's been the biggest question of the off season yeah. outside of signing players because Matt wise is gone. We all celebrated that he's with the Chicago white Sox. He's the bullpen coordinator that, Tells you all you need to know about how people view him, right? The Angels have hired Barry Enright as Mm -hmm. their pitching coach. Enright has spent the last two seasons with the Arizona Diamondbacks. He was the assistant major league pitching coach and the minor league pitching coordinator. But Johnny, something that you you, you texted to me and then you tweeted about is that working with Brent Strom, who is the pitching coach for the Diamondbacks, has got to be a really good thing and has got to, has had to have impacted Barry Enright in a really positive way. Right. Yeah. Brent Strom of course was with the Astros. He retired, then decided to unretire and got hired with the diamondbacks. And there were a lot of everydayers out there thinking, what if we could pick up in the same way you and I were talking about uh, uh, Mark Pryor from yeah. the Dodgers. There were a lot of people saying, what if we could pick up Brent Strom from the Diamondbacks, and this feels like the next best thing. Sure. You're not going to pry away Strom from the Diamondbacks, but you can hire his assistant pitching coach to come be your head pitching coach, which yeah. I think is a very good thing. And so uh, th- just lots of, again, Mike, more good uh, <laughs> more good words from around Major League Baseball in terms of this. Barry Enright, of course, was uh, was an angel in his career. Yes. I think he had a 13 and a half ERA. <laughs> and so, yeah, just to dispel any fears about that, you people need to understand that career success does not necessarily set you up for coaching success. And so a <laughs> yeah. lot of these guys who are coaches in the major leagues may not have had the best careers, but they are good at communicating and identifying issues and making a plan. And so to have Barry Enright 
as the pitching coach, I think is going to be a very good thing for the Angels. Wayne Randazzo tweeted, he said, really excited to be on the same side as Barry Enright again. Really good guy and a mobile uh, mobile uh, Bay Bear when I was calling their games in 09 and 2010. Uh, again, he pitched for the Angels in 2012 and had a 13 and a half ERA in 12 <laughs> innings. And you think about this being the hardest job in all of Major League Baseball because sure. you have guys like Patrick Sandoval and Reed Detmers who overall took steps back last yeah. season. Mike, I was reminded of a conversation that you and I had uh, last off season where we looked at guys like Detmers and Sandoval and even Suarez and said, hey, if they're this good now based on their 2022 season, mm -hmm. let's compare them to some of the pitchers around the league and see where these guys could be when they're that age or have that many years of experience. And, and it was actually a really good conversation because you assumed that these guys were going to take steps forward, but they didn't. And yeah. so that's, that's the issue here is we've seen where these guys have been in the past. Now it's a matter of can Barry Enright get the best out of the starting pitching staff from guys like Sandoval and Detmers and Griffin Canning and even Chase Silseth, who mm -hmm. I, I think is going to be a real big stud for us in 2024. Uh, hardest job out there. Do you agree? Disagree? What do you think? I think so, Johnny, because of the narrative. And the narrative with Angel pitching yeah. has always been, they need pitchers. Everybody needs pitchers, but the Angels really need pitchers. And they don't have anybody coming up. And they don't know how to coach. There's always this negativity around the Angels when it comes to pitching specifically. And rightly so, because they really haven't produced strong front of the line starters like other teams have. And the last time they did that was I think Jared Weaver, maybe. Yeah. And, and these young guys are, are exciting. They just haven't put it all together. And not only with the starters, John, but with the bullpen as well, they were in the bottom yeah. third for ERA whip walks, strikeouts, hits homers. Right. Ooh. And so we were excited about the pieces that were brought in to try to help this bullpen be great, but it was really those pieces that, caused this bullpen to be mediocre because yeah. the back end of the bullpen and some of the pieces that were brought in were just, they were just not good. Right. And, and so that's, that's where I think that is, this is going to be really hard for Enright in the sense that if, if he's working with these young guys and they haven't developed yet, then his work is going to be helping them to find out the type of pitcher that they are, whether they're a mm -hmm. starter or whether they're a reliever. Right. And, we, we mentioned it already. Angels seems like they really struggle with the mentality of being a strong, confident player. It, that's the pitching staff, <laughs> right? Yeah. And we've talked about Patrick Sandoval specifically, that that guy just needs to tone it down and hone it in when it comes to what yeah. happens with him on the mound. And, and perhaps Enright can bring some sort of philosophy that helps him with that. I, I do like that they hired an infield coordinator and that we can work on our defense because that was a main issue as to why Sandoval would get really, really frustrated. But I think that Enright's got his work cut out for him. And I do think that this is going to be a really difficult job. But when you look at where he comes from and who he worked with, I have all confidence that if he continues to not just cut and paste or adopt what he was doing, but to bring in a plan and bring in a strategy, I think it'll really benefit these guys. I could see Detmers taking a step forward. I could see Sandy taking a step forward. Heck, I could even see somebody like Davis Daniel really improving mm -hmm. from, from last year as well. I feel like we have to mention Davis Daniel now because he's like a friend of the pod. But he's a bud. I, I could see that this pitching staff could take some steps forward. And wouldn't that be great? Wouldn't that be great to be able to say, yeah. Look at these guys and how much they've improved. And wouldn't it be great to go, finally, we've got some coaching. Like, we've got a Bud Black that knows what right. he's doing. And that's what I love about this move with Barry Enright. There's a lot of confidence that I have in this move. And again, it goes back to because Ron Washington is in charge of things. We've said it a million times. How many people are out there, look at the Angels and go, man, they could be so much better yeah. if they just did this or if I could tell them to do that, right? And I feel like a lot of these guys who are coming in on staff for Ron Washington are going to be that. Let's let's review really fast. We have third base coach Eric Young Sr. He's going to be the uh, the outfield coach yep. as well. First base coach will be Bo Porter. He's going to be base running coach. Mike, I know that he's had some silly takes on MLB Network from time to time, but hearing him talk about this job and working with Ron Washington uh, on MLB Network because they've said like, hey, 
you know, congrats to you. We'll see you later. I think it's going to be a good thing. I, I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be just fine. Yeah. Uh, Ryan, Ryan Goins is going to be the infield coach. And of course, Wash is going to be out there working with him as well and help develop Ryan Goins and give him a game plan to give to the infielders. Of course, uh, we have hitting coach, Johnny Washington, pitching coach, Barry Enright, catching coach, Jerry Naren. I got to say, Mike, I'm feeling pretty good about this staff. How about you? I'm feeling really good about this staff and you mentioned it already, but can I just emphasize, like I, I haven't felt good about the the team's coaches in a long time, probably since yeah. the Socha era. Right. And, and yeah. this is really a, a good, what feels like a good combination of wisdom, um, opportunity, also younger guys that understand analytics, but also understand the eye test. I know that there was a whole conversation around Troy Percival coming in and, <laughs> and he didn't like the iPads. He wanted more eye test. And then they got rid of some guys like Buddy Carlisle, which we were like, I don't know if that's a good move or not. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But who they br- have brought in gives me confidence that there's going to be a mesh of both. Here's what we used to do. And here's what we can do now. And each of these guys have the experience that I think that our players need in order to improve in 2024. Yeah. You, if you, if you're a fan of the angels, just watch this season and you'll see how much of an impact coaching has on these players and the ability to find what's within them, the talent that they have and take it to the next level. This will be a good example of what that looks like or could be a huge disaster. We'll see what happens. <laughs> hey, thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. Every day, is remember that Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts like John and I from Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. You can go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. Hey, give us a follow at Locked On Angels on Twitter and at Super Halo Bros on Twitter and Instagram. If you're watching or listening, come on over to YouTube, find today's show, comment below the video. We'd love to hear your feedback, what you think about this coaching staff. Mike, what do we have on deck for tomorrow's show? John, let's talk a little bit about pitching. And there were three pitchers specifically that went off the market. And the question we're going to ask is, did the Angels miss out? And what can Hmm. they learn from one of those signings that, taught us about loyalty to the team and the team's Ah. loyalty to the player. That's tomorrow on a Thanksgiving edition of Locked On Angels. All right. We hope you'll come back and join us for that. Until then, my name is John, and that's my brother, Mike. And my name is Mike, and that's my brother, John. Thanks for being here with us, and we'll see you back here tomorrow for a Thanksgiving edition of Locked On Angels. Gobble, gobble, baby. Gobble, (laughs) gobble.